Okay, looks like we are live. We're gonna do a new document here. What do we got? What do we got? Where'd it go? There it is. That's our custom size. This is how we uh, this is how we do it in the stream. <clears throat> I generally do a very large um, uh, canvas so that if something good is to happen, we've got a large file to work from later. That makes it simple for printing, cropping, all that sort of thing. All right, so let's see what we got here. I'm just going to kind of start by sketching, sketching out some shapes and see what happens. You know what, actually, I'm going to, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll keep this. I was thinking, you know, we could keep that simple, but you know what? Let's not. Let's make it difficult for ourselves. gonna kind of draw let it be I'll pause on that one for a second Not really sure what we're making yet. And in fact, I think it might be a wise idea to just bring this brightness down a little bit here. Maybe even less. And the reason being, we want to be able to go somewhere. You know, we don't want to hit the ceiling with white and then later come to adjust the image and find that we have left ourselves with no option. I mean, with digital you always have options, but it, in that case it would involve adjusting the entire image. So I think it was last week I said that um, <coughs> I tend to start my drawings with a circle. You know, just make a shape, just kind of start I don't always bisect it like that, but just start moving the pen. Okay, and um, I say that, that is kind of a blessing and a curse, right? So the blessing is you got to start with something. You gotta start putting putting something on the canvas, and if you don't, you're uh, you, you might have that kind of fear of the blank canvas going on. So you gotta start with something, but if you do, then you tend to fall into the same old habits. And so if I'm just doing everything with circles, then uh, I'm gonna end up with kind of similar designs, similar shapes, right? So that's something to bear in mind. But that said, it's a starting point, and if we're aware of it, then we can adjust accordingly. So I was considering uh, recently how um, how I feel about my mechanical work. That is, uh, hard surface, you know, uh, things that are supposed to be, you know, machines. And uh, I think, as most artists are, I'm pretty self-critical about about that. Um, I can see it, and I'm sure there are others who can as well. And say, okay, Eric, you know, nice try, but it's pretty 
pretty clear you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, I know it sounds like a yeah a nice way to lead off, but I mean, um, when I do mechanical work, that's when I start to think like, okay, how how does this thing work? How is this design any different from like the last thing I did, or like whatever motifs I'm kind of building off of? And um, I think that. Um, well, for one, I could definitely benefit from uh, paying attention to something new, right? So a lot of what I've done is, okay, so it's partly, let's say, habit, and then part of it is a design aesthetic, like things that I've seen before, um, uh, you know, Star Wars and um, different, you know, I don't know, I think of like this little the show Exo Squad that I watched as a kid and stuff like that. You know, there's like this design aesthetic that you've kind of, um, there are other outside forces kind of driving your taste. Okay, so there's that. And then there's, um, I would say, drawing ability. And that is, uh, our drawing ability and or habits, like the things that, um, uh, I just do automatically, or uh, like how I tend to fit parts together is kind of what I'm doing right now. Like you've got the shape up here, and then I'm like putting this other other shape into that. And I I don't know that I want those shapes to you know bisect each other uh, so sh sharply, uh, like such a sharp contrast like that. So. Um, uh, I could adjust that, but that is something that I'm recognizing as um, a habit, right? That's just something I'm doing kind of automatically. Those look like eyeballs, right? So, um, anyway, and there's one more thing I was going to say, but I already forgot all the other things I said, so I probably just end up repeating myself. Um, oh, yeah, and then there's just there's information. There's the understanding of how things work, right? So there's... Uh, I believe I said what you've seen before, um, what has kind of driven your decisions, how you draw it, your habits. Um, and then uh, I think just uh, kind of exploring new approaches that um, uh, that work different ways. So a lot of my influences. Uh, just mechanically, like mechanical understanding, are from um, uh, Sikorsky when I was there. And just kind of seeing how the linkages work and um, that sort of thing, and I, I thought that was, uh, I don't know, it's pretty informative. I think that it, it was interesting. I think uh, definitely to understand that, you know, everything is assembled and can be disassembled. And there obviously there are different methods for that that make it uh, more or less. Uh, accessible, um, you know, whether it's designed <clears throat> designed for maintenance or not, or whether it's like, uh, you know, injection molded or whatever, something that just can't really be um, <clears throat> broken down into smaller parts. Um, but uh, everything comes from something. There's a process uh, by which it's developed, and I think that has influenced my design aesthetic quite a bit as far as thinking, okay, how would this thing be built? Uh, it's got to be put together some way. It's got to be maintained some way. And so, uh, um, you know, you got to have the right brakes at the right points and fasteners and, you know, you got to think, is this something that gets... Um, you know, is this like a panel that's got to be opened up every day, or is this something that, um, you know, you use a drill, <clears throat> and drill out some fasteners, and you only do it when um, something is seriously broken every, you know, three years or whatever. I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, looking at the chat, we got pillowed head in the chat. That's like a prophecy right there. Hello, head. I started this stream already wanting to go to sleep. <laughs> so, 
hopefully this isn't like a I just uh, sleepy Eric uh, uh, stream. <clears throat> Thank you, by the way, uh, for the, uh, the kind words on there. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to cut out a few spots here. I think uh, another thing I'm kind of thinking about <clears throat> is uh, just kind of making these parts more dynamic interesting you know like um the part does not need to be like a can attached to a box right it can be um it can be kind of formed to whatever needs to be there <clears throat> excuse me i think that that was uh, another kind of idea on the on design that um you know aesthetic is thinking about all of the uh, underlying mechanics, um, you know, like um, if you've got, you know, these parts here that need to be, um, okay, think about is this a hydraulic part or is this a um, electrical motor or whatever, so does this need to be um, driven by a motor that we would put in here okay and then if we do that like what's gonna how are you gonna house that um, and so you know you might imply your actual uh, machinery and then kind of like build a housing over top of it to, you know to cover it up and I usually and this is again maybe Star Wars um, or you know, game design or sci-fi, whatever. I usually like to leave some part of it exposed because it's cool to look at, <clears throat> and it implies its function. Um, but you know, generally, all that would be um, covered up. You know, you see these kind of like radar dome type things. You don't have that. Um, you know, those moving parts and stuff exposed to the elements you would cover them up with uh, some kind of housing that doesn't interfere with its function um, this is <laughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me this is grieving me a little bit um, I think it's partly like just approaching this um, light and dark just too linearly and that bothers me just the and this just only um, painting aesthetic side of things I think I'm gonna start pushing this all kind of one way as we get to this edge here it gets all into the darks some heavier shadows here get this all looking darker <clears throat> so anyway I was I was getting at uh, you know where we learn about things and I, I think that I would benefit from um, getting some new sources of inspiration you know for example I was talking about this as a as a um, uh, motor, electric electric motor, um, and that is not something that I really saw much at all when uh, I was working at uh, Schweitzer, um, aka Sikorsky. Um, it was mostly hydraulic lines cables that sort of thing so you saw a lot of uh, a lot of um, either like steel tubes or um, you know rubber tubing kind of thing hoses that's the word there's definitely electrical uh, systems but they didn't drive um, <coughs> motors they were all 
like avionics. Okay, so maybe we go with like a top light on this. So I'm gonna dim this down a little bit here. And why don't I zoom in for everybody there at home? That way you can enjoy it um, with more of your. Uh, screen space. You know, I always work, um, <clears throat> excuse me, much smaller. It just, uh, well, it just works better that way. Uh, you see the whole design a little more easily, you can make decisions. Um, okay, so we are going to bring out the, the pits and peaks here. Some of these will, will cut back uh, because the the thicker that edge is, the well, the thicker we imply that the material inside of it is. And then the, let's have a reason for this cutout. We need like a part coming out here. No idea what it's going to be. Is it going to be like cables or are we going to have uh, some kind of... I don't know, indicator, uh, not indicator, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, antenna, this man's just making up words, okay, there we go, um, I did say I wanted to establish more of a top light, and I think I will do that. So if you do the light kind of all from the eye, from the camera, then you get this kind of sensation that it's like a, like a flash photography mounted to the, to the camera, and that is not the best look. And uh, if you're doing reflective, reflective material, which I'm kind of having this be like a little metal, metalish looking right now. Um, if you do reflective material, then you do end up having that, <clears throat> excuse me, highlight kind of closer to the eye. Right. And what I mean by that is like wherever you're looking at the part, <clears throat> instead of like so, if the sun's coming straight down like this, and you get a light on top like that. Um, your highlight's going to be kind of like on the turn of the form um, just because it's going to bounce off there. It's going to bounce off all of it, but that's where it's actually bouncing into your eye, and so you actually see the reflection of the sun there. It depends on the angle, like the angle of what you're looking at, <clears throat> the angle of the that face, and the angle of the, the light source. But uh, anyway, all that to say that more reflective material is going to end up with that um, uh, I don't like that it's going to end up with that um, kind of light effect and uh, so you got to be aware So I want to make this thing without like putting uh, too many guns on it. 
you know, like let's just make it as a as a machine first. And I think we'll cut that in. Like so. So this would be like a hood. And we'll have all of our parts in here. And so now we gotta echo that form on this side. Again, I want to bring the value down so that it's not um, just completely bright over there. I want to catch some of that light, but I want to fade this to a darker value on this side. <clears throat> now I said that and I put all those bright highlights in there and I'm not sure that that's even what I want. I want to make it more dull. Talking, I've got nothing to say. Think about this area in here. I'm not really sure what I think about any of it. I don't even really know why I jumped in on this. <laughs> Just thought, okay, I'll make this thing into something, I guess. I am getting a little more uh, anomalous, like, uh, uh, pressure sensitivity issues. I just updated, um, recently to, um, to get Windows Inc. reinstalled. I gutted it from my machine because... It was causing so many problems with uh, Photoshop and whatnot. And then once I 
uh, started working in Substance Painter, and then I needed um, needed Windows Ink again because apparently Substance Painter uses Windows Ink for pressure sensitivity, and if you don't have it uh, activated, you have you get no pressure sensitivity. So <clears throat> that's what we did. Got it reinstalled, and <clears throat> excuse me, man, I'm struggling today. And it seemed to work all right for um, uh, well, for everything. The uh, Substance Painter is working, and Photoshop is working, and so I'm happy. Um, however, there's always a however. Um, I do get some little glitches here and there. <clears throat> Nothing too bad. I can live with it. Alright, so we're going to go here. Let's see. Should we maybe start thinking about these forms? I mean, we're just, we're just kind of jamming things together right now. And now we're thinking, okay, what are these forms and how do they work? Um... You know, is this like is this one thing here? Do I just combine that? Make that one form. You know, have little parts coming out here. How does this thing integrate? You know, does that go underneath? It needs like a we need to establish a shadow. And then what's the profile here? Um, is this I always throw events. You know what I mean? This is one of those like habits. I make a circle and I go, oh, it's an event. Let's make it something else today. And then <clears throat> I'll turn around and make it an event again. Uh, you know, when you're not looking. So what should it be? Maybe we'll do a little, uh, some kind of radial thing going on inside of there. Break my oath and make it glow. I'm just not a fan of, of glowy things. I mean, it's okay. It's fine. Uh, they're cool. It's cool to make things glow here and there. And I'm sure now someone's going to go look up my work and find all the times that I did make things glow. Fine. I've done it. But um, I think it's kind of a cheap trick. Just throwing that out there. Um, it's cool to have things glow when it makes sense for them to glow, but a lot of things out there, okay, there's cool, and then there's, like, stupid cool, right? So, like, I'll give an example of cool that makes no sense, but it's still, okay, it's cool. When you watch, like, a sci-fi film, and the character's got, like, a helmet on, and there's, like, little lights inside the helmet, you know, that, like, illuminate their face like this, right? It's like, ooh, they're in here, and you, like, see their face all lit up. You kind of have to do that for the story, right? Uh, so you can, like, see the person. But, um, turns out when you're in a helmet, and you've got lights right next to your face, uh, you can't see anything. <clears throat> there really is no point to it uh, other than the actual um, film or video game you know point of the artistic uh, the, the aesthetics of showing that thing <clears throat> I'm tempted to throw in some panel lines but we are not going to do that because we are nowhere near having figured out um, this form and my apologies for all the uh, coughing and uh, whatnot. I don't know what my deal is. Alright, I don't like this. Just straight up. I don't like it. See ya. Uh, what's it gonna be? An intake of some kind?
I'm loving it. That was a free one, McDonald's. You're welcome. Product placement. Um, let's see. Um, uh, I want something here, but I don't know that that's really the form that I want for the top of this thing. Let's see. What do I even want? It's hard to say. That is kind of silly. It's a silly shape. And seems like it should be maybe more of a formed bit rather than just like this. Um, like, like sheet metal. I do tend to fall into that. Um, design aesthetic of having things uh, just be like these like flat sheets uh, which I think there's a place for that but let's see about having this more gently turn the form here You know, so it's like a big, uh, like fiberglass kind of part. Gotta get all and then down, I think. Up and down. To match that other side. Does this guy even know what he's trying to do here? I'm not sure what that shape is, okay? We're just gonna be honest about that. I don't know what I'm trying to make.
<clears throat> but I can tell you, it doesn't make me happy. Oh boy, what is even going on here? used. I'm going to zoom out and reassess this fella. I think that could be a little darker. Yeah. 
Let's um, use our lasso tool and we'll clean up some of these, as they say, fiddly bits here. <clears throat> I think a lot of this other stuff, you're just making noise, that's all you want. Get out of here. You know he's making stuff. Just make, a, just make a big mess here. All right. Here's an idea. Why don't we... Uh, comp this into something. Once we get a new layer going, we'll, uh, let's see, control shift N, right? That's a new layer. <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness. <coughs> it's just getting worse. All right, we'll just start, uh, we'll just start playing here. We got this kind of, uh, in shadow over there. here to balance some lights and darks to start leading the eye around making this an interesting scene that's the idea whether or not we're successful we'll leave that to the critics just got to do the work That's what they all say, Eric. That's what they all say. Start chopping that up a little bit. I think we'll have to 
bring out the old smudge brush. The old Elwell favorite. There we go. Negative. We'll go here, maybe. I'm gonna move this down in the in the layer order. I think it's Control Shift Bracket. No, maybe Control Bracket. There we go. Hot keys for the win. <clears throat> it looks like an inspection robot. It's a joke. It's a joke. Always felt that way. An In inspection. Like you're always just, every time you show up, people just give you that look like, oh, party's over. Yeah, I'm just here. I'm just, all I'm thinking about is that sandwich for lunch. But yeah, maybe we will just delegate it out to robots. I actually want to zoom out a little bit more and get, a, get another view on this because I'm thinking we need like a cross um, value, like something coming this way to counterbalance the uh, the uh, diagonal lines of the mech itself. I do like, you know, these clouds coming up and over. I don't know, I'm kind of a sucker for that, like, vignette, you know, curvature on the edge, on the corners. Um, it's my jam, always has been. Uh, I'm going to learn a new trick, I guess. But, um, yeah, I think that having this be some light or something, that, or some kind of, uh, just graphic shape that comes in diagonally across the form behind it to uh, to 
counterbalance its uh, you know, this you know, diagonal this way. So let's get rid of this. Let me put in there. Let me put that in there to push that, you know, that black of that back higher. Which, um, I don't think that really did anything for us. We just did it. The force of habit, I guess. Okay. I think these shapes in here, they're all right. I do want this kind of gradation, but I also want to have some texture to it. So we gotta, we gotta break those up. Break it up. Standing too close, making me feel uncomfortable. Okay, um, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe turn those into structures or something. That'd be kind of cool. Look at these. I mean, cool with a with an asterisk. We'll find out. I'll be the judge of that. Another post-apocalyptic scene. A future we don't want to live in. Dystopian, is it? Not necessarily post-apocalyptic. That's too, like, too structured, you know? Uh, like, it looks like it's turning the turning the form there, so I want that to be more kind of just like a flat shape. I think that'll be, uh, that'll read better.
Okay, now we'll go back up to our, uh, well, <coughs> excuse me, let's go. We'll do another layer above everything. <coughs> what do we want to do now? The sky's the limit. We can do whatever we want. Um, I think we could smooth out some of these values here. And, um, I could paint that. Or, um, we could smudge it. Let's, let's paint it. Do it the old fashioned way. There's always exposed cables in sci-fi. It's like, hey, let's put this out there where it could get snagged on something, because that would be cool. Sounds like a good idea. Okay. Get the uh, warning that the audio is not not up to snuff. But I think that's probably just because I'm silenced. Like when a when it gets below a certain threshold, the uh, system kicks it off. So let me know if there are any audio issues. That's all I'm trying to say there. I don't know if that's real or if that's just, uh, you know, some automated thing freaking out for no reason. <clears throat> uh, no, what this needs, I think what needs to happen here is this needs to come farther forward, actually, rather than being cut back. Uh, 
Okay, what do we got here? A little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I think we could probably uh, just kind of unify that right there. This shape can kind of come out a bit. And we can angle these a little bit so they're not completely linear. Linear. Let's see. Uh... Oh, these two there are. <coughs> Chat here, Eric, where in New York are you? I'm uh, close to Lechworth State Park. That's the western New York uh, area. So about an hour from Buffalo and Rochester. We won't give too many details on the interwebs, but uh, in the, the Lechworth State Park area, it's a beautiful uh, country countryside. Um, yes, if I am freelance or full-time, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm freelance, yeah. I've been freelancing for uh, a very long time. I, uh, I like it. I like the freedom. Though I do, um, I do kind of miss the camaraderie and, uh, like, the social aspect. trade-off. Okay. Uh, so I want to get like the general form going and then once I'm happy with that I will uh, start bringing in the panel lines and all that stuff. Let's uh, bring all this down in value. Back here. Just kind of want to have that just be in shadow. And everything's kind of... Um, the light's kind of just... Glazing, grazing, not glazing, grazing across the front of this thing. And we'll catch a couple of these guys, and then we'll like, you know, fade that down into the, into the uh, front of that arm there. Okay, and we need more back here, I think, just like to support the. Though I do like the diagonal, and I want to keep that, you know. I want it to feel like it's in motion. I don't want it to feel too stable. 
that would be a problem. And maybe we'll push all this back. Um, I don't know. I think I want to bring bring this up a little bit. Value. And break up this form a little bit here. Definitely a lot of uh, kind of cheating going on with this model as far as um, as far as uh, you know, getting the shapes to look interesting first, and then we'll figure out what they do later, which I think is generally the way to go. But um, it means that. There will be a, a fair amount of sorting out to do. Let's see here. Push that back that way. Bridge that. Can I get that just homogenized as kind of one value? I do think there is um, a certain wisdom in bringing things together in value. Um, so like we got a lot of contrast here and we don't want contrast all over the place. We want to control it. And so um, like this back in there, catching that light, it could catch a little bit less. We'll push it back. Right? We'll start to bring this here, I think, down into more homogeneous uh, value. I think that's going to have to be my catchphrase. You know? One day there's going to be merch and it's going to say homogenize. That's it. That's all I got. And probably we'll come back around to that. That would be like another, another thing that we got to put in there. Yeah, we'll come back around to that. Okay, let's think about um, panel lines. Maybe we'll do this as a new layer. So control shift N, we got a new layer. Oh, we can, we can name this. So, let's think about this. We'll go, you know, we could do like the shift click on these but 
Nah, actually, I think I want to. I think I want to do these together. That's how they would be done. In the for reals world, and then maybe we'll have like a little uh, you know, hinge there and some a latch. Let's do the latch right just right there. We'll go like that. And uh, should that live within a housing? This certainly should. The frame here. They should have like a. You know, what do they call that? I want to say a coupling, that's not the right word. I can't believe I'm spacing on it. Uh, anyway, it should have a, a, a lip to that. So it's got like a, a part that holds that all in. And this guy, maybe we do. And probably all would be one piece um, that would connect there. Um, this might be kind of interesting to break into like a larger component, so we'll go here, clean up that edge, and then we'll go like over, around like that, have it kind of come out of there. Something like that. Be kind of fun. And then let's see, this thing. We've got. This little circle thing that comes out. Spheroid. And let's go. I'm tempted to bisect it just to like show the the part. Actually, all those lines should be thinner for this one. So we'll do the, the overall shape first, and then we'll do these small small ones here. Yeah, the trouble with the trouble with bisecting it is it just I don't know it's, it just feels too cheap, you know. Like it's not actually supposed to be designed that way. We're just doing it to show the form. That's that's a little better, I think. Um, Mm, let's see, I've got a little edge there. I suppose we could throw some rivets on this thing. While I'm kind of in brain freeze mode. thing. So this I think should be a separate part like so. Like uh, these things as well. This could all be maybe one. Maybe if we like break it right here. That comes around and then maybe smaller so I don't know don't really like that so much I want it to be more dynamic so we'll you know, bring in that it's funny I call it a diagonal it's diagonal to the part but it's actually almost vertical uh -huh. and I 
Maybe. Not even sure about this piece right here. Like it it kind of makes sense to break that out as a separate piece, but then this maybe I need to sort out really exactly what's going on with that. Is this a? It's like a cavity comes up and over. Anyway, let's speed things up a little bit here. So, put more of these diagonal lines here. I think I preferred them kind of coming in that way, but it feels weird for the actual you know, the part itself. Like, does it make sense? Uh, no, but does it look cool? That's that's the trick. Mm. This could probably have little um, you know hinges on it or something that holds that in place. And then I'm kind of tempted to just kind of start making this bit right here. I could just do a bunch of greebles inside of there. So we'll, we'll add that. Um, shape there. And then we'll, we'll go in underneath that one. Almost like that. I think it needs to be like down here. Gets kind of lost and then comes back up and over like that. And then we're going to have to sort this out because we've got like, we've got one, one there. I think we just need to duplicate that so that it's, uh, so like that this part kind of goes between these two shapes here. No, oh, see, this is the stuff I don't like. I'm just gonna be, just gonna be frank about that. Um, I think some people can detail until they're dizzy. But, man, I just can't, uh, I can't say that I can't do it, I just can't really enjoy it. <laughs> it's not my jam. Big picture's my jam. So, I guess, with all the talk last week of, uh, doing the, doing the frustrating parts, you know, powering through, I guess that's, this is the thing I gotta power through on, huh? I think I could see getting, potentially getting comfortable with it. 
I mean, I were a little more aggressive about the uh, the decisions being made on details. Um, let's do something with this back portion here. I'm looking at those as kind of like recessed, um, bolts in there but you have a, a recess in the housing to let you get in there without so that I don't know aerodynamics seems not that important on this thing <laughs> You know, I was thinking that I would do a layer style with this um, panel line layer in order to uh, get kind of a like a edge or rim light effect on the panels. Um, but I. I think we can do that another way. Let me do a new layer, though. I don't know why I'm... Because uh, you know, if we do a new layer, and we say, for example, like, throw a little light on here. Just, whoops, wrong color. Okay, there we go. Like that. No, not saying that we want to do that, but if we brought it down, you know, we can bring it down below our panel line. So we could, you know, trace those out and get an edge on them. Now, the faster way to do this um, <clears throat> is to just base it off of the existing layer. So I'm actually going to just grab all that and delete it uh, so that we don't, um, you know, whatever. We don't need that. So what we can do is we can take the panel lines here, and I'm going to duplicate it. And um, we'll just get rid of the fill, so there's no fill on it. Uh, and we'll go uh, outer glow. Okay, and we'll just do like um, linear dodge is probably fine. Go with the white. Um, I mean, we could we could add color to that if we wanted to, but you know, it's black and white, so I don't think we need to do that. Um, <clears throat> we'll go with something like that. I think I will. If you increase the spread, it kind of tightens it up, and then if you decrease the size, um, I mean, it tightens the fall off if you increase the spread. Um, and you can also adjust it here with your contour jitter. What do we got there? It's not. That's not going to give as much. I was kind of hoping for. There we go. Noise. Noise usually makes me happy. I shouldn't have said that. That was. That is not true. All right, now if we do overlay, this is kind of what I'm thinking here. If we do overlay and we bring this value up, then it's only going to give us a little bit in the shadow areas, and it's going to give us more as we get into those mint tones. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think that's what we want. Okay, so let's go like off-white. We throw the opacity up. You see what I'm saying? You get it deep in here but not really in there now this is why I didn't really want to get too crazy with doing all that because it will add to that background um, you know so you can see it happening right there and like right here where I made like minor adjustments that probably shouldn't have happened on that layer uh, but anyway we'll we can push this up um, 
you could do outer glow or you could also do um drop shadow it may even be better so let's do drop shadow we'll do this on again overlay pump up the value we'll lower the distance and the size and the spread increase the noise okay so we're in a, a similar place excuse me and then we can uh we can flip it like this right so that it's only going to be on that that top edge right and you can see if i increase the distance you know it increases the effect there so usually what i would do here is i'll go a little bit on the distance we'll increase the size so that we catch it just a little bit on both sides let's decrease that noise and then we'll go bring our spread back up decrease our distance kind of figure out the sweet spot here Spread can be uh, cantankerous. You gotta be careful with it. Okay, but what this does show me is that we gotta we gotta adjust some of these, clean them up a little bit. Okay. In fact, uh, we'll hide the original. So we'll take the original and we'll bring, bring the fill back all the way up. We'll take uh, our duplicate that we made, lower that fill down a little bit, and then we'll uh, bring in a, a mask. And we'll start cleaning up some of these edges a bit. And uh, probably like a really sharp, uh, thin brush with high opacity might have been um, giving us a cleaner effect here. But you know what? We're going to live with this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Goodness. Just struggling over here tonight. I don't know if I like all these rivets on there. Too uh, like clunky looking, you know? Okay, just a, just a touch of elegance. This is, um, that's going kind of haywire, which can happen if we, you know, when you start adding layer styles, if you didn't plan for it, and you can get some 
algorithmic result. I think what can be kind of fun with this is you, you kind of you get these lost and found edges, you know. You're following the panel lines, but they kind of, you know, like you could kind of disappear that one, just make it this light gray there, you know. It doesn't have to be super prominent, but it's still there. You can still still pick up the form. This one I did, I I know I drew that circle there to try to clean that up. And I don't know what I think about that. I don't think that was a good decision. Some of these just were not very clean lines there. You try to be quick and then you, you know, you pay for it. I like that one being kind of a heavy line there. Um, this is a little funky there, so we can kind of clean that up a little. There's some funny things going on here that could be cleaned up. And there. Funny things everywhere. glass of water. That was an excellent glass of water. But, as far as this painting goes, I'm debating whether to do something with the background. <clears throat> we did leave ourselves some room to bring the light up a little lighter, so we could bring it up right in here, or wherever we want to draw attention. I kind of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, kind of look at this thing like, it's partly the light grazing on it that's kind of interesting, but it's also, I think, you know, this is kind of the cockpit um, torso area, whatever you want to call it, not torso, what am I saying, head area, um, and, uh, that generally would be the, um, object of, uh, uh the focal point. Um, we can throw in little infantry dudes in there, that'd be kind of cool. Let's do a new layer here, control shift N, we'll just call this one dudes, okay, and then we'll, like, put in some... Again, with the like, compositionally, let's get this thing kind of going. Um, this you know diagonal motion. Nah, it's too much right there. Too much contrast. Thank you. 
just just kind of throwing in shapes. We'll figure these things out as we go. They're not very uh, random, are they? They're really like evenly spaced. So let's make some clusters. Like maybe we'll like group something here. I don't like that. Uh, maybe we'll group a couple guys here. Say guys, I'm assuming that I'm making little infantry dudes, but like, really at the end of the day, I'm putting in some kind of abstract shape down here. To, uh, <coughs> play off of that compositional motif. <clears throat> Let's see, do I want so I'm thinking like I got this dude like maybe he's turning up towards that thing, right? But that feels like more of a still pose to me, right? Like he's uh he went from running up the hill to now he's like just making us taking a stance and looking at the thing. Um, I don't know. Well, let's tease it out and we'll see see kind of what happens. I think if we take this. guys like all kind of going up and this thing's going down so is this the you know opponent I don't know maybe these dudes are like in a Ridge line or trench or something here. Shoulder mounted rocket thing. Now we're talking.
awfully linear. Okay, let's throw some more dudes in the equation. Maybe we'll, we'll put something here so they're kind of like in that space. And then we'll have this guy here. I think we'll maybe lean him up against something. Excuse me. Oh, my soul. Well, that's when you know. Once I start getting that oh, my soul rhetoric. It never recovers from there. needs to be darkened up. Whole thing. Well, maybe. I don't know. Feels like it. It's a foreground element. And then we got this. The lights casting here. I don't really want this to compete. subject for uh, contrast. Excuse me. Man. I'm just not gonna... I'm not gonna end this hack in a coffin tonight, I guess. Okay. That does not need to be this, like, solid rim light. You know, so I'm gonna try to... those as value shapes rather than as a line. Yeah, that's the word we're going for. Line. Excuse me. And what if these guys are going downhill, but it's just... They just gotta lean that far back. <clears throat> Switch this guy up. Okay, well, what do we want to do? New layer, we'll just 
start being a little irreverent with this thing. Let's, let's chop it up. It's our painting. We can do whatever we want. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Man, I'm just struggling today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do we want to clean up all that value right there? That edge. Um, I think, regardless, that's got to be kind of like a clean shape there. We could make another bubble up here. You know, <clears throat> Excuse me. Goodness. All right, let's darken all that up so that all kind of just flows together there. I don't think we need to go quite to black. In fact, I'm going to kind of lighten up some of that black that's in there. It's too much contrast, I think. But I think we can kind of design these shapes here. Words. Uh, design those shapes there to kind of transition. Uh, transition that form. So. We'll show this form change just real subtly. With uh, <coughs> value shapes.
I'm tempted to cut this in half, right? Like, to take this whole thing and just go like here. Have it be like this articulating head. I should probably do this as a separate layer. Or not at all. <coughs> Let's do a new layer. So I think I'll start by blocking in like the. The shape that's going to remain underneath here. The shape that remains. That's like a band name. Like a, a not very good band name. But here you go. It's up for grabs if you want it. The shape that remains could be yours. <coughs> Excuse me. I do struggle. Goodness. Um, how much of this do we want to leave like? Well, that would not work very well, right? So, like, this maybe needs to come in a bit here, and this needs to... That shape doesn't make any sense, right? Like, you would want to be able to have the head, like, you know, what's the word? Articulate. Move. Go up and down. That sort of thing. the more I'm like it's just looking like a Star Wars thing which is not really what I'm going for I'm get my own little weird alien vibe going on Uh, hmm. What is it going to be? I think I might unify that shape. Kind of making me sad. Okay, 
it's cleaner, but I don't like it. Maybe closer to what I'm going for. Nah, don't like that. <clears throat> I think this turn of the form needs to be handled a better, a little bit more cleanly. A better, more cleanly. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm losing a lot of the characteristic that I liked about this thing. Though, <clears throat> I'm just going to keep rolling with this, and we'll see, you know, when we go back. Um, we'll see what we think. I think it's... we got to give it a, a fair shake. I do want to uh, mess with this form here a little bit. So we got this kind of thing coming out the side here. And I'm thinking like if we separate that, so it's again like a separate shape. So like this casts a shadow there. And so that kind of widens at that point. And we'll have this kind of come in here. Up and over. Fiddly bits, that's the other one. So we'll do fiddly bits and what was the other thing I said? Uh, 
homogenize. Homogenize the fiddly bit. Yeah, that's a. Uh, that's basically the whole script. Homogenize fiddly bit. You got it. <clears throat> so let's cut these angles. And we could add some like utility stuff, you know, utility stuff. I like little handles. Um, and boxes and tools, and things for the, you know, for the people to do their jobs. Oh man, some of these areas stay really quite rough. <clears throat> and uh, I'm okay with that. I'm okay. But I do need to be cleaned up. I do it because it's the right thing to do. <clears throat> Speaking of the right thing to do, I've been thinking. That's dangerous. It's dangerous, but I have been thinking about why. Do we want to do good work? And, uh... This is going to sound really dumb, but... I think because it's the right thing to do. There's something about, like... Integrity. People with integrity want to do good work. And I'm not trying to, like, uh, you know, build some kind of, uh, you know, there's this kind of person and there's that kind of person. I don't really like that. I don't like that stuff. Um, but I, I look at, like, the people who do really good work tend to do good things like all over the place and I know that's not like a, a given right there are some punks who are like rock stars you know but um, sometimes but the people who just kind of buckle down and do a good job. They tend to do that in other parts of their lives. 
That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. There's a phrase. It's uh, something to the effect of if you want to get something done, you you hire a busy man. Right? It's like the people that are diligent in one thing will be diligent in many things. And so the uh, the concept of integrity or doing something because it's right, I think does kind of come down to are you gonna do your best? Are you gonna are you gonna take your work seriously? You know? I don't know. There's, I mean, there's obviously, there's limits to every idea, right? I would say the limit there is like, well, sometimes you can't. Uh, sometimes there are reasons and not just excuses. There are plenty of excuses, but sometimes there are reasons and um, you're no longer able to do uh, the thing or it's not, um, it's not the right thing in the moment to do. Um, do the thing. What am I saying? think about the identity that we give ourselves in our artwork and that's kind of what I'm alluding to is like there's a good there's a good side to that and then there's a dangerous side where you go too far I guess is what I'm saying going too far is having your identity wrapped up in your performance and having your, uh, you know, artwork be your, uh, I mean, on one hand, it can kind of speak for you, right? And, um, I don't know, I think there's, I think there's issues with that. Looking at the chat, uh, we got Adonis in the chat. Welcome. She says, uh, I still got to text you on Discord. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking today about getting that Discord set up. And, um, well, here's a question. Do you think if we do a server, do you just do it poorly? You know, should I just like, just get it started? You know, with, uh, with a, Hello, channel, general, and uh, show your artwork kind of thing, you know? And then if it grows from there, you know, as the ideas come in, we add more to it. Or does it really need to be designed and the concepts got to be fleshed out in terms of, you know, how, um, how I expect uh, the interactions to go, I guess. Because I can see that that would be a, that there would be benefits to doing it that way. Um, so, that's a very loose question, but would that be something you'd, uh, you'd rather see done planned and put together, or just, let's just throw it together and do it poorly, just to get it started. And this is not, um, you know, I understand that what you're talking about is, uh, you know, just like a one-on-one -on -one conversation, and that's that is fine. We'll do that um, when we get a chance to do it. Um, but I am looking at like, you know, how do we have a more perpetual, like, persistent thing and bring some other people into it? Um, uh, kind of bridge, um, uh, bridge some of the different goings on. You know, there are a couple different conversations going on, and that's fine to have them one-on-one, uh, -on -one, but I think it would be good to uh, kind of bring some people together. Okay. I need to stop talking. i put it out there. Alright, let's hide this layer. Well, first let me uh, just clean up just a little bit here in the legs. 
going to define those. I might just make those just solid black back there, actually, but let's see. All right, so we'll go to our layer here. This is our paint over. Excuse me. Yeah, I don't know. It's like a totally different design. I kind of want to make it lighter because the legs are so light. So I'm going to do another layer. And uh, we'll just start like chopping this up so that it's, um, you know, looks more like. Um, This is like a grate back there or something, you know, rather than um, this massive form. And so that would be just tightening that edge up so it's sharp. I think we can go, let's see. Um, maybe like that. Okay. Bring all this stuff up as well. Um, let's see, I think in order to lighten it, this needs to be... Um, either it could be detached or we could like bring all this underneath. And then... Um, you know, cut some shapes out so you can kind of see the mechanics going on underneath. Underneath the hood. Under the hood. Under the hood. Okay, this guy has lost his mind. <clears throat> mm, maybe we should. Let's see. some suspension in there or something. Um, I talked about separating this, so I'm wondering if we maybe turn this form down underneath, like so, and then we just start cutting that out, you know, so that's, uh, let's see how I want to do this, maybe like that. more diagonal needs a little more energy to it um, now it's got to be like that's kind of got to be high up there so that that diagonal works 
weight like this it needs to be up here so that everything's kind of pushing this way. There are some colors sneaking their way into this image. Unheard of. Unthinkable. Okay, I'm gonna do something crazy. We'll grab everything and we'll just start uh, liquefying because I really want to like this. But I think in order to get there, the shape has to be, um, like this head I think it needs to be smaller, like big time. I kind of like this, like, uh, machinery stuff coming out the front, um, being significant, but it, you know, maybe it could be smaller. I totally mess up that. That piece there. <clears throat> and this thing is just massive. Whatever it even is, who knows? You know, to be supported by these small little guys here. So maybe we need to beef those guys up. Maybe they shouldn't be, um, you know push pull rods, maybe they should be, uh, I mean, they, they really shouldn't be, they should be like, uh, some kind of milled out part or something. Again, with the, the weight, we gotta kind of bring this part up so that it's got this, you know, this diagonal thing pushing everything down. And I do think that uh, probably converging some of these at the front would help as well. Um, this angle's not helping too much, so we'll. Shift that around. Don't really know what's going on here. This could probably be tighter. Can we just lift the whole? Hold back up. Is that gonna work? I don't know about that. Uh, I 
think this. Let's see, this can get brought up and in, and this. Oh boy, you got that whistle. Got that whistle on the on the uh, on the S. You know what I'm talking about? When someone whistles their S's. I had a friend that used to do that. I mean, a friend that does that, but uh, I haven't seen them in a while. You know. Hope they're not listening. <laughs> That's all I've got to say about that. I've said too much. Yeah, some of these shapes are boring, to say the least. You gotta have that kind of thick and thin thing going on, you know? You can't just be linear. Linear is lame. Let's see, this, that's more of a curve, but we can just tighten it up, I think. And I feel like this whole area could come out farther. In fact, I'm kind of tempted to uh, just like pull it right back so that's got just more energy to it, you know. I mean, there's kind of this spring effect of these diagonals this way and that way, the zigzag gives it this feel of like uh, it's a little bit less stable. It's, it's wound up. It's ready to ready to pounce. I don't know. What, I don't know what uh, that thing is back there. But it's there. Whatever. Kind of having fun with those shapes. Why not? We're here.
Uh, I think we'll stop right there. And then maybe we'll hit the smudge brush to uh, kind of clean up some of that nonsense. All right, so we'll do a <clears throat> new layer. Go to smudge. We'll do sample all. And then we'll just kind of grab some of these areas where we... Uh, um, where the liquify is just way too obvious. And we're going to kind of just shred that up with this uh, this um, hard-edged smudge brush. And hopefully we end up with the best of both worlds and not the worst. It looks like it's dropping a like a flamethrower, uh, you know, something there. So as much as I like what was going on there, I kind of want to like separate the, the the foreground and the background. And then I don't, I don't suspect we'll do color tonight. There's a chance. There is a chance. But, um, there's a probably greater chance we won't. That's a non-committal approach for you. I don't think I want that. So we'll just go in with the eraser. Erase that out. Sometimes when you make a mess with the smudge brush and you erase it with a textured, like, rake uh, style brush, you just get these wonderful broken edges that uh, you just kind of want to keep them. And so maybe you should. Now that I've mentioned that, I guess I have to kind of show you what I'm talking about. All right, here's an example. Tread lightly. Take it with a grain of salt here. That's, not, that's all I'm saying. I'm gonna. We're just gonna play this one by ear. So, I am gonna smudge this out here, right? So I'm using this hard-edged, jittery smudge brush that will give us kind of sharp, broken edges, right? And then if I go slowly, it's going to smudge. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to... I'm just going to work out these shapes a little bit more. 
we're going to make a mess, though. And that's a problem. A problem that we're going to try to fix with the uh, eraser rig. Um, it's going to... It's going to be gritty. Okay, it's going to be gritty. That's what we're going to get. Um, it's going to be um, a bunch of smudge and a bunch of jagged edges. And then what we do from there is we just kind of sort all that, sort it out, clean up the madness. Okay, so I think I want like a little bit more here, like it's just some more of these dark, uh, darker um, values because um, that kind of implies the structure of the of the machine, the legs, and um, Kind of lacking in that department right now. It just looks like there's very little going on there. I'm going to clean that up just a little bit like that. Okay, so now I'm going to take my eraser and we're just going to kind of go at this. I'm just going to break up those edges and add this little bit of chaos in there. That's another way to do this. Maybe let's just start. We'll paint in some some extra dark because there wasn't very much to begin with. This will probably illustrate it a little bit better. Okay, so okay, and then we'll erase from that. And typically what I do after that is I will come back in and clean up, you know, like, I like to have some like lost edges because that um, it feels like it, it's more in motion that way. And as I recall, I wanted this actually to be um, pushed farther back. So I'm actually going to do two things. I'm going to do a, I'll do a diagonal this way here. And we'll do a lightning hole in that, maybe two. And then we'll add a rim to it. Some little, um, little cross members. There. Okay, so that'll be our structure and then this will this rod right here will be our uh, actual push pull rod and we'll shift that angle of that uh, shadow so that it looks like it's actually uh, you know kind of coming out from underneath I'm gonna darken that up a little bit so that it's just cleaner cleaner all right voice is giving up on me. Um, and then I had said earlier that I wanted to bring this uh, up, higher up here, to get more of that kind of diagonal um, uh, feeling. I think probably one will suffice. Even on this one down here, I don't want that to get to look too complicated. Yeah. Uh, let me just get rid of that. Okay, and then this one I think I'll um, darken up just a little. Alright, so let's bring these shapes up here so that we've got more of that kind of lined up we were talking about earlier. And for this I'm just thinking this will just kind of be like a stop. Um, so we'll have like this shape here come into a uh, 
just like this pad that'll what in the world? Oh boy. My uh Oculus decided to turn on. Sorry about that. Alright, we're back. Um Yeah, so we've got these this uh, these two pads so that the idea is, you know, as you uh fully extend that arm those will kind of uh, buffer each other right there. What's the term? Dampen dampeners. There we go. Uh, we got Gabe, Gabe Heisinger in the chat. Welcome, 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 welcome. I think we were just listening to your your dad announcing the uh, soccer game there. It's a small world. Oh, by the way, we got uh, you know unless. Um, Unless Emmy says otherwise, we've got a sketch group tomorrow. That would be cool to have you come up. Um, let's see. I might round that form out there. And... I don't know what I'm doing with this right here. Maybe. Put little circles in there. Put little circles in there and just pray that it works. Oh, well, now everyone knows my secret. There's a lot of circles in here, come to think of it. Um, there we go again. We can just turn that into a crate. Does not need to be a crate. Uh, or a vent. It's a. It's really, really a bad spot to be a vent. Um, let's see, what do we need? I feel like I was saying stuff and making promises about things we were going to do and then, uh, you know, didn't do it. So, remind me if you think of it. Oh yeah, one of them was we were going to change these uh, control rod linkages here. We were going to go, let's see, let's clean this up. So it's just, we'll just paint the background in like this, right? And then... Uh, well, we'll just do them both. Why not? While we're here. So this is all kind of in the background. So I'm going to kind of push it back to a lighter, uh, just more muted uh, tone there. Value. Tone. Value. Yeah. Value. Okay. Throw the lightning holes in those and take my jiggy. And then uh, this one here will clean up. I don't really know what's going on. There's like extra legs and stuff, but um, you know we don't have to. Shh, we don't have to tell anybody. It's gonna be alright. All right, so uh, what I was saying was that we could put in uh, like an actual structure and then the uh, linkage that will, will uh, do the um, control the motion, right? So our structure could be like so, right? And then we'll uh, match these values a little bit here. We'll go a little brighter than that. Okay, uh, and maybe we'll do like a little cross beam here, and maybe one up here, and maybe like bevel it in here. Throw a couple of bolt uh, spots in 
bolts on there. And then we could um, put a lightning hole in it to lighten it up, right? Because you got all the structure, but um, you don't need extra material if you, if you don't need it. Punch it out. <laughs> um, and now let's bring in our little actuator rod there. Uh, and then I kind of feel like we gotta justify what's going on here with the light, right? Because we got bright, bright values there. But then it kind of fades out. So I'm just kind of seeing that as like a shadow passing along, grazing along there. And we'll darken these up just a wee bit. Bring the light across the top. I think we should uh, clean up these a little bit here. I mean, I don't know what's going on there, but we can just pretend it's the same thing by throwing in that same kind of mo motif there. Yeah. Okay, I'll admit that that is cheating, but we're doing it. Okay, maybe we'll do it over here too. Throw in some lightning holes. Does this have to be so uh, um, solid? We could we could take this line and let it kind of run back, right? I guess we could cut it out there, and then keep those. Too much. You, you, you push too far, you're gonna break. It's a weird design, I'll admit. It's weird. I think it has some issues as far as being like uh, cohesive, right? So like what's going on here is a really different shape language than like what's going on here, here. So, uh, you know, the more time we spend with it, the more we kind of figure out like, what am I doing with this? Um, design motif, you know. Am I trying to implement too many motifs into one thing? Right. So like this is. These are really straight, clean, right? Whereas these are really curved. You might think about that. Like maybe curve that a little bit more. Maybe give it a, um, a rounded edge here. And I think, you know, as long as we keep this material beneath it, um, and as long as we don't put an edge to it, let me show you what I'm talking about. As long as we don't put an edge like that. There we go. No. I'm terrible. What am I doing? Like that. As long as we don't do that, it doesn't look like it's thick. As long as we keep this, like, just flat panel going on here. I wonder if we could, we could maybe implement some, like, you know, add something to it so that it's got more, follows that motif a little bit more. That's way too much uh, contrast for that part of the...
Negative. It's like just way too like a uh, generic hey there's some shapes back here you know so let's clean that up a bit shall we this was supposed to be like a handle which would be fine to have we could have handles if you need to grab onto something Is this not what you came for? Dad jokes. Okay. Let's uh, zoom in. Oh, that's a... <laughs> that's a crazy mess right there. It's kind of interesting. Uh, that's probably... Probably what, Eric? Probably what? Probably a huge mistake. Yeah, I don't like that at all. That's just nonsense for nonsense sake. Can't be doing that. Um, okay, what time are we at? It's about 12 o'clock, and that was actually my my target for tonight. I know usually we go till, um, until we drop, and that's got to stop. I can't be doing that anymore. So, um, that being said, I think if I can get these things going more promptly, um, right around 9 o'clock then um, we can we'll have the time to do all the things we need to do before the uh, before it's tomorrow yeah. um okay okay I think there's a couple, couple of shapes here that are just offensive. Need to be. Need to have a sit-down conversation with these. Set them straight. Um, so we're just looking for those. What shapes are? On astray, need to be corrected.
think that needs to kind of flow onto the other side of that uh, little, little uh, ditch there that those guys are in. In fact, do I even like that? They're awfully dark. You know, there's a lot of contrast going on there. Maybe... Maybe they need to be lightened up. Lighten up, dudes in the trench. <clears throat> Famous last words. that out just a little bit just whoops oh boy no wrong button just right there just give that a little bit of contrast right at the peak but like knock the contrast down as it gets down to the yeah the, uh, the base you know what I'm saying Alright, now that I'm looking at it this far away, I'm wondering, like, do I want to bring this whole, this like a leg here, back into glorious shimmering light. So we got a little bit of that yin yang thing going on. the dark and the, I mean it's not necessarily light but we got dark against light you know light against dark and then just and we just do just a just a suggestion of it in there that might be kind of cool and maybe we push this all the way down here and just go super dark there on the feet and, you know, I was talking about pushing these um, portions back there even darker. You know, the legs in the background. And I think that's probably a good idea. Alright, let's zoom in. Let's see what damage we've done. Okay. Um, do I want to see more contrast on these fellas? You know, just like a little rim light. Maybe this guy too. shapes a little bit. I think I like that. I think that little rim, that little catch light, highlight, whatever you want to call that, right down here on the, uh, on the rocket. I think that was too much. But we could bring this up just a skosh. Okay, 
zoom in here. Yeah, uh, I don't like that right there. That's kind of just adding all this extra needless noise. I'm just wondering if having that cleaner, I'm actually going to leave it just a little bit soft so that we don't have to, you know, the, the sharper you make it, the more you're kind of married to the forms being perfect. And if you soften it just a little bit, especially if it's background, it's just not that important, you know. And so you got to choose your battles. You know, am I going to detail every single thing in this scene? Um, I mean, like this helmet right here, right? Like, we could leave this loose. Um, and it just, it's a matter of uh, compositional taste, I think. Like, how do I want this to... Um, how do I want the viewer to look at this thing? I want them to glance around at every little thing and um, look at all the little details, or do I want the feeling of um, motion, you know? So if I you know, take this little highlight there and I just, just push it, smudge it a little bit, you know? And it's like everything's now kind of got this upward motion rather than uh, feeling like it's a freeze frame, you know. If you sharpen things up, then you get a freeze frame, you know. And so we may even do that. Let's do, do a new layer here. And let's just start let's just start pushing some of the things things around, right? Like this. This is all very sharp. Why? Why? Who did that? Why do they still work here? In fact, uh, actually, I might just change the value on these things altogether so that they're more like, uh, you know, like a different material than this housing. Got some more edges to mess up. That was the plan, right? It was too clean. Mess it up. I think that's part of what's going on back here. You know, I got this, got this area that I wanted to have, um, you know, be kind of obscured as, well, it's technical greebly bits in the background, but no, I really didn't give it enough, um, I don't know, I made it too clean. I didn't give enough attention to, uh, to make it truly background, you know. That's weird, isn't it? It's kind of a catch-22, right? Like, you could give your background way too much attention. Um, but what I mean is kind of that just loose, um, kind of 
foggy, lost edge kind of thing. That's what I'm talking about. Too much, too much. I wanna, I want that kind of energy and that uh, directional kind of flow. However, um, I want nice shapes too. All right. Um, That's funny. This thing's like warped. Turns out when you use the liquify tool, that's what you get. Um, okay, do we want to wrap this form around, maybe? Let it capture some of these. Um, linkages here for this leg. Yes. Yes, we do. We do want it to do that. I made a huge mistake. I opened up a brand new can of worms. All right, let's do a little bit of, uh, we'll do overlay. We'll do a little color bump on it, I think. And we can add, uh, we can add color with our overlay, in fact. Nothing new for anyone who's been watching other streams. look at this as a whole image and decide what needs to come up in value and what needs to go down.
And we'll start pushing some things back. Now the only trouble with this, overlay works pretty well. It works pretty well to get things um, pushed to their value, uh, respective value zones. But the only issue is like when you have cutouts and pass-throughs and that sort of thing. Um, then it's going to have, it's going to cause some issues with uh, balancing those, balancing those values out. And we don't want everything to have the same priority so we're kind of pushing some things to have less contrast some to have a little bit more some to be flat like uh, flatter shapes others to have a kind of grayed or like dissolve into um, kind of ambiguous shapes and turns of the form all that sort of goodness Now, I will say, often what happens is, you know, I'll, I'll like kind of where it's headed. Um, from the thumbnail view, and then there's a lot of cleanup that needs will need to happen to, uh, to make it work. Almost there, folks. Almost there. All right, let's zoom in and see what we've got. See what mess we've made. We've made quite a quite a few changes there. So let's figure out the difference and see what we like. It definitely goes, <clears throat> we go higher in value there, but I don't think that that's really necessary. I think that actually keeping it kind of tame is a good choice. Um, I'm thinking like somewhere in here. It's just a little bit of a bump. I might even go a little bit less. Just a little bump. Alright, now let's do, uh, we can do curves, color balance, all that good stuff. Uh, so, for our color balance, we can add, kind of, um, I don't necessarily think we need to go, like, sepia, um, but, like, you can add some color in the midtones and still kind of keep this black and white look. Um, or we could do a split off of, you know, highlights being a, you know, a warm and the shadows being a cool, something like that. Um, as I'm like doing the exact opposite of what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just laying out our options. Um, okay, so let's just go with this for now. And that's actually pretty close if we go under normal mode, but we can change the color so that we're not affecting our values. Um, color will have, uh, saturation will have some effect on value, you know, depending on the hue that you are working with. I know I say this like every time. Um, so you can't really just jump in arbitrarily and like throw in colors and not deal with the, uh, the value. Um, but 
I'm not worried about it. Let's see, do I want that, like, bump? So, okay, this is kind of what we were talking about earlier, like, how you uh, homogenize. Homogenize the fiddly bits. Uh, so if you're homogenizing, um, like, in one zone, so, like, right now I'm looking at my lights, I'm splitting them so that I get this higher contrast. But what that does is it kind of makes the, kind of makes it look like plastic, right? And so if we bring those together, uh, and so our lights are kind of like smushed together, much closer in value. Then it's going to feel like more of a matte uh, surface. Let me get rid of that one. I do like the contrast, but um, yeah, it does. It messes with the material value. Also, it's the kind of that cut off, um, the fall off. I mean of. Uh, that shadow area. All right, let's do. I might just do hue saturation, and then we'll like uh, isolate it to a certain zone. I think this has got to be a night scene. Just it's just got it. It's got it in it. Okay, let's do, we're going to go into dangerous territory, we're going to go into crashing territory, we're going to do blend if, and we're just going to try to find like, what's the sweet spot? Kind of like in that where it's just it's kind of isolated. Yeah. But you know, color does change the composition. You gotta think, gotta think about these things. I like how I've adopted this tone of like, uh, you know, I know that I'm supposed to be doing it, but I'm like acting as if you're the you, the viewer, ought to be the ones thinking about this. Shame on you. Shame. You didn't think about color when you first started this? Okay. Um, maybe we go... So it, sometimes you can take this and go underneath your other uh, values and just kind of get more of a, a shift. Um, you know, because we've got the color balance working above the um, hue saturation and the curves as well. And I actually kind of like that, uh, just putting that down at the bottom because it flattens out the, the, um, the highlights to be this kind of flattened blue, which would be like our moonlight or something, with just a little bit of catch here and there. So I like that. Um, I might throw another color balance on and just like keep building it up this way. So, you know, I did say I wanted to go to bed at midnight. And it is no longer midnight. So I was generally planning to avoid uh, Terminator 2 uh, tones. Terminator 2 tones. Um, but here we are. Getting into those, you know, red against teal. You know, we just gotta put like a little laser on there. Okay, I do like that being, yeah, somewhere in there. And I like how desaturated that is in the mid. Uh, you know, it goes it shifts to green and then to and then to black. And I don't know. It's a choice. It's a choice. 
We'll just go with color on that one. Because it really is pushing our values down. We can do, let's see, darker, lighter. I'll bet you lighter doesn't do anything. Yep. So it's only pushing it darker, which we're already kind of dark enough. The only thing I would say, though, is... Uh, um, kind of like that. Um, that the... Blue still could probably be um, brought down a little bit. Okay. All right. Uh, lower this effect. There, so it's a little closer to gray. Curves. That's uh, okay. Okay, and then I think I will just do, I'm going to do a solid color. We'll pick our blue, and we'll do darker color. And then we'll just start bringing this up until we, see, so that's our lightest. And then we'll bring this down until we get close to where we want to be on these values here. Okay, and then we can lower the fill or the opacity. So that we still get those little angle changes, form changes and whatnot. Um, I would say the, the, uh, uh, the the issue with doing it this way is when you have a form change, you're reflecting different light. And so it doesn't, it's not perfect, right? It's not the best way to um, implement color, in my opinion. But um, like I said, we didn't really think about this. Shame on you guys. Didn't think about this when we started. So um, here we are trying to fix it. Uh, what we could do, uh, I don't know. That's I actually kind of like that. Let's go back to normal on this one. Hmm. Normal versus color. Uh, we'll go back to normal. And we'll figure out where we want that. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Normal or color? Which, which is better? I think normal is probably better. But it pushes a lot of it to black, which I don't like. Could duplicate it. Just do more of the same. All right, let's do this. We'll do select everything, paste it, copy paste. Then we'll do the version without color. We'll copy paste that. Um, so this is kind of mid. And then we'll do um, the black and white version. I think we kept the curves. No color balance, no hue saturation. Do we want the curves? Uh, no, well, I guess we'll just do it without it, because this is, this is what we painted. Okay. So now we got all that. Um, hide those. Uh, might do some other combinations of this.
That's kind of cool. Do, 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 do. Um. Here we go. All right, now uh, we'll just bring all these back, and then uh, I'm going to select all that. Control G and name that our work group, and we'll hide it. Quick and dirty cleanup. Okay, so now we're looking at these, thinking what's what. Um, I think we could go. We could set this one as luminosity. Set this one as, let's do lighter color. All it's really doing is changing a little bit right, right on the edge of black. I don't, I don't think I like that. Let's see, let me do light in the screen. Overlay. It pushes the colors just a little bit. And then this one we can do. If we do darker color, then it, it, has, it has some kind of interesting color play, but um, not my favorite. Uh, overlay. That's kind of cool. Divide. Subtract. Exclusion. That gives us that kind of uh, complement. Let's do uh let's see what we can do with this difference. Too much. It's too wild. You've gone too far. Alright, let's do what we do exclusion. much man it's just going crazy like I said you push too hard they're gonna break okay let's go what if we go above oh yeah that's a mess so this is what we're doing you know we've got this set as our luminosity so it um, balances everything out, but um, we're actually really messing with the uh, hue quite a bit in order to to get these shifts. Now, okay, this is actually what I want. Um, what I want is that little bit of that shift there. So I'm just going to grab all that. Uh, Control Shift C, Control V, and then I like uh, this shift in hue there. So I'm going to grab that. And then um, that's kind of interesting for whatever reason, so I'll go with that. And then without either of those, um, I'm going to just lower that luminosity a little bit there. It's kind of much darker. And I don't know if overlay is really the right way to do that. I think maybe. Soft light makes more sense, or maybe uh, like a multiplier or something. Let's do multiply or soft light. Soft light's a lot gentler, so we'll do that. Okay, so now I'm going to push that luminosity all the way back up. This one was on overlay, right? So we'll leave all that stuff alone. Let's do uh, 
this I think could be good to get some nice like interesting grays and I might just like adjust this hue saturation grab our magentas and like pull them down let's shift that over more towards blue right so we're pulling them down and we're bringing the value down uh, maybe we'll go value down let's, let's uh, shift that they don't have a lot of saturation in them so it's uh it's not affecting them a huge amount. If that makes any sense. All right, so what I'm looking for is something like that, where it's just like the, it's like these kind of toned, like the grays just have like a little bit of color in them. I like that. And then uh, we can do something similar with this. But can, what I'm thinking is we take this and we mix it with this one uh, in order to get kind of like a warm transition uh, on the colors there, or on the uh, like lighter values. So that's kind of what I'm going for, but just like in this zone. I think we might need to invert that, so we'll do this one above, and let's do like overlay. Uh, I'm not seeing any one of these that really hits exactly what I want it to do. It's close, but we need to uh, knock out the black on it, so we'll do. Something like that. And it's just to get that transition from like warm yellow to like kind of a magenta into the blue. Okay. So that's without it. That's with it. We could lower the effect and kind of find the sweet spot because it is making it really um, uh, kind of color dodgy. Which I don't really care for. We could uh, bring our luminosity back up to the top, and that will control that so that it won't really allow it to get like go to uh, white. Uh, I think that's okay for now. All right, uh, what was this one? This was our like a our, our gray tone. And this is our blue. What else do we have here? Let's um, we'll do blend if, and then we'll take out the underlying layer. Let it catch just a little bit, and then fade that in. Really not nearly as cool as I thought it would be. It's actually kind of lame. Yeah, that's not my favorite. Not at all. Let's bring it in just... Yeah, I don't like that either. Set it to color. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's okay. It's okay. It's making a minor shift. I don't even know if it will come through in the uh, stream, but it's making a very minor shift. Um, uh, where it's in hue, in just in like the uh, mids there. Okay. Now this guy, what do we want to do with this? So we've got that kind of a warm spot on there. And then 
this is like a just intended to kind of make things mute. And I like it. Okay. Uh, and then this will bring our values back to what they were. I think I think I'm okay with this. You know, it's not uh, I mean to really do it properly, I think we'd have to go in we do like a, I don't know, overlay, and we'll pick like a mid value and let's say we go with like a green. Okay, and we separate the the background from our subject. You know, that would be the proper way to do it, but I'm tired and I'm gonna go to bed, so we're not gonna do it that way. As I'm doing it that way. See this is my this is my curse. You know? Uh but then, you know, like I was talking about earlier compositionally um, this is where you're kind of showing uh, the difference between the background and the subject by uh, introducing the hue. Uh, whereas um, we were just doing it with value at first. All right, let me zoom in. I guess we blocked it in. So we could just shift the color and, until I'm happy. Good luck. I don't know. I'll take all this. We'll group it. Control G. And then um, I'll just duplicate that and merge. So we've got our just a flattened version of it. And then I think I'll take our like uh, our basic luminosity one that we have here. I'll bring that one back up. And uh, I'll just set this one to normal. What was that? That was kind of cool. Darken. Oh, yeah. Kind of go half these. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, I was thinking we'll just set this to normal, bring it up, and then we can just compare between the, the two versions that we've got. Um, that's okay. I don't know. I'm just still like, it's not quite there. There's more that I want to get out of it. Mid tones, I already did that. Highlights. Um, you know, I, honestly, I think like the less color, the better, it seems to me. It's like it's trying to do too much. It's 
somewhere in here I like, and then somewhere over here I like. And it's just I think just kind of a different um, different vibe that you get off of it. Let's go to normal, and then we'll change that to color, color versus normal color. There you go. We'll keep some of that because it'll that will. Uh, Keep our mid-tones happy and our shadows happy. Okay, um, I think we'll just stop there. That's probably good. I think. Luminosity, bring that back. Sure. Maybe. We'll go half these. All right. Okay, I gotta stop because I gotta go. I gotta go to bed. So, um, all right, that was kind of a fun one tonight. Um, probably could have thumbnailed a bit more in terms of composition. Um, you know, even just the idea changed so much over the course of the um, session. But um, I think it was fun. So that is it for tonight. Thank you, everyone, for. Uh, hanging out for the good conversation and uh, uh, for those of you that mentioned it yep go right ahead and we'll, uh, just hit me up on discord and we'll, uh, um, we'll go from there all right that's it for tonight thank you for joining in and uh, have a good night